What's up, Fight Fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Deontay, the bronze bomber, Wilder. And Wilder, in an article, explains the delay for the Luis Ortiz rematch, okay? Because a lot of people have been asking, you know, wondering why he hasn't announced the fight. And he had this to say. He said that he's been spending a lot of time with his family. He's been busy. He's been busy with his properties. He has a couple uh, events. He's been doing a lot of charity work. So he's just been living and loving life, you know, and his words, he's been um, living off the fruits of his labor, okay? Enjoying the fruits of his labor, actually. And, you know, that's great. I think that it's a very good thing to be doing charity work. I feel that a lot of fighters um, don't really get recognition for doing charity work. Even though you hear certain things and certain elements of their life about <clears throat> these negative things that they do and they're you know, outside the ring or whatnot, and those get so amplified, but you hardly really hear a fighter, you know, of that same that same fighter, if he does something positive, you hear really small um, stories about it, you know. So I'm glad that he is doing certain things with his family and for charity work, you know, with, uh, you know, helping people. That's what you're supposed to do, especially if you're an example um, and you're a role model for other people, okay. Now, that's great. <clears throat> he also explains why he gave Luis Ortiz another chance is because for one, he says people felt that he was given more time in uh, the beginning of the eighth round. And according to him, he says he doesn't know where they get that from. You know, they were only checking to see if he was okay in that beginning of the round. And another thing that nobody wanted to fight Ortiz so since nobody wanted to fight him and he gave me such a good fight, one of the best fights I believe he's had, you know, he obliged him and blessed him again. Now, we're going to talk about both of these situations. One, let's start with the extra time. <clears throat> uh, he says he doesn't know where that comes from. Well, it comes from the fight because that's exactly what happened in the fight. He was given 28 seconds. That's half a minute to recuperate, to recover from a seventh round beatdown for a 30 second onslaught of punches from the other fighter. You go back to your corner, you take your full minute to recover. You stagger back to your corner. You stumble back over there. You take the minute, you get up and they check you after the minute's over. What else do you call that? I mean, I try to be fair with everybody. But that wasn't fair and that wasn't right. You know, and the protocol of any referee, of a referee, they check how you, <clears throat> they, they, they check you in the ring, they check your condition, they come in right when the, you know, the, um, the referee, I mean, the, the coach and everybody is aiding you, okay? That's when they step in, okay? That's their job. They step in while they have time to. They don't stop the fight to ask if you're okay unless you have a bad cut or a very, very bad swelling, and then they have to check you out in that time. But at any time, does, did Deontay Wilder had anything that severe for them to stop it at the beginning of the eighth round? Even Paula Malinaji, that is one of the, he's a very good commentator and an ex-boxer, even asked that question. The commentation got that in trouble. They alluded that. They, they exposed that concept. Like, what is he doing? By the words of Paula Malinaji, what is he doing? Okay, they, they can't do that. Why, are they, why didn't they do that in the corner? Okay, during their one-minute rest period. And that's why, honestly, I think Deontay Wilder, side note, doesn't like Paula Malinaji to this day because he just spoke the truth. You didn't supposed to do that. And they know that, you know? So that's one reason he got extra time from a fighter that never been to the canvas, for a fighter that just got, you know what I mean? It was meant to, it, that was meant to play out like that. 
Second, nobody wanted to fight Ortiz. Well, how do we know that if he hasn't fought anyone? I mean, Ortiz got offers to fight Dillian White, and he wanted to fight on your undercard, under your undercard. Now, what are the odds of, or what are the chances of that promotional company okaying that undercard fight, right? Just like they're okaying the Wilder rematch, but they can't okay a $6 million offer. They can't okay a headline fight with Dillian White at the O2 Arena, but they can okay Deontay Wilder rematch. They can drop the ball, so to speak, with Eddie Hearn with this huge offer they never received. Why do you think that is? You see what I'm saying? That's corruption written all over it. Luis Ortiz was sabotaged. So, of course, nobody else can fight him but you because he's on your side of the street. He's, in, he's uh, on your team. And, he, and it, as long as he's on his team, he's, he won't be able to fight anyone else. So we can stop that, oh, nobody else wants to fight Ortiz. I believed that for a long time until that damn Joshua offer came into play. Now, I will, to be fair, I will question, like, okay, if Eddie knew that they dropped the ball, he should have resent that offer like he did with Chisora in the second rematch because, remember, Chisora asked for, too, for uh, too much money before. Also, remember that? And then he was out. And then Ortiz came back into play. That's why they offered him the headline at 02, and then it mysteriously got turned down. But... Right? He could have done that with the Joshua negotiations. Everybody wanted to see that fight. That fight would have sold out. Boom. The Cuban Ortiz versus Anthony Joshua. You know how much buzz that got when I when I dropped that news that it might happen if when, when Anthony Joshua called out Ortiz? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think, I think it was on Al Heyman's side, but I think Eddie helped that along because he didn't push for that fight like he could have, like he did with Chisora and Dillian White. Too. Okay, so but nonetheless, you don't turn down any amount of money like that when it's offered to you to counter punch and shut all that other shit down. You see what I'm saying? So Wilder gave him the opportunity because he knew, I think deep down, he knows that maybe not the second problem or the second situation, but he knows that they gave him more time. He was protected because they were trying to set up a fight with AJ because Fury wasn't even around. So they were worried about the big fight. Okay, Why do you think Canelo uh, uh, would decision Lara like that with 117-111 scorecard? Because it was a bigger fight on the horizon and they're not going to stop a fight. You know, a, a potential super fight for a, an upset fight like that. That's not going to happen. Not this time. And not to Canelo. So certain fighters get protected and they get the nod, okay? So that's just an example. I know that's off, but that's just an example to explain how big fights are in the midst. Those fighters have a hard time losing a decision, especially when they have an up-and-coming fight that is worth millions of dollars. But anyway, um, those are the two things about Deontay Wilder. Hopefully he can get back into the gym and start training for Ortiz. I hope he gives him the money that he deserves. You guys tell me what you think about Deontay Wilder's break. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunched. Peace.